Howdy everyone, Mr. Kazi here in his virtual studios in beautiful Atascacita, Texas. And today we're going to talk about the experimental process. In this lesson, we'll learn about the experimental process. We'll talk about variables, controls, and types of data. A lot of you might think that just the scientific method itself, which is the process of science, is sufficient uh, in talking about experimentation. But in reality, the experimental process is not the scientific method. It's a part of the scientific method. It deals with the testing step. And so we know the scientific method deals with observing and research and hypothesizing and then testing. And that's what the experimental process is about. It's the testing part. And we're getting back to a time uh, like the 1600s where people aren't experimenting like they should. They're discussing it. They're, they're looking at things through philosophy and talking, but they're not supplying the data. And to be good science, you need to test what you're saying. You need to supply data. We want to talk about the experimental process, which is uh, state the problem, choose the variable or variables, determine the controls, design the experiment, and then collect your data. And of course, when you're done with collecting your data, then we go back to analyzing the data through the scientific method. So the problem. The problem is what you're trying to prove or discover. The problem is your hypothesis. It's your idea. But you can't just state something and then say it's true. In science, you've got to prove it. You've got to have data. In order to put the experiment together, you've got to decide what your variables are. And the variables are those parts in the experiment that change. And if you're really going to have a good experiment, you're going to have one variable. If you have more than one variable, then what you really need to do, or at least more than one independent variable, what you want to do is design more experiments. Two types of variables. There's the independent variable and there's the dependent variable. The independent variable is the variable changed by you. It's the variable changed and controlled by the scientist. And usually you want that to be one variable. And if you have more than one independent variable, then what you need to do is design another experiment. Then there's the dependent variable. And that's a variable changed by the experiment. It's something that happens because of the independent variable. And this is usually the things that you collect. This is the data that you're going to collect and record in tables and in charts so that you can analyze it. And of course, then your, your controls. Your controls are the things that you keep constant from experiment from trial to trial to trial during the experiment. Uh, no matter how many times you try it, and, and by the way, you need to do several times. You can't do it just once. And I know probably a lot of times with your teachers, you do it three to 10 times. But in reality, science, scientists do things over and over and over. And you keep those uh, things, the controls, you keep them the same. Now we have the experiment. You need to design an experiment, which means you need to put together your materials list, you need to come up with your procedure, write it out, and keep track of it every time that you change something in your procedure. This is where the lab book, the lab notebook, becomes uh, indispensable to the scientist. And of course, then you have to have uh, in your lab book a place to collect the data. And you should have lots of data. The more data, the better your experiment and the better your conclusions are going to be. Data is the information collected during an experiment. And there are two types of data. There's qualitative data, which is data based on words. And qualitative data uh, is kind of ambiguous because I could say something like tall or short, and that could be different to different people. Someone who is five foot four thinks someone who's six foot is tall. However, someone who is six foot might think of uh, someone who's six four as tall. So, and the six foot person would think that, or the six foot four person would think that the six foot person was short. You can use things like color. There are all kinds of different colors of blue. And blue could be different in one person's mind than the other. So qualitative data, which is based on words, can sometimes just be misleading. 
And so even though it's necessary and we do take down a lot of data in words, quantitative data is far better. Quantitative data is based on numbers instead of words. And it's based on measurements. That's recorded as numbers. And quantitative data is far superior to qualitative data because numbers don't change. And it's understood by everybody. 6.26 and 6.26 is always 6.26, right? So I, I think you're getting the idea here. Quantitative data, data much better than qualitative data. Okay, let's recap what we've talked about here today. We've talked about the experimental process. We've talked about independent and dependent variables. We've talked about controls. We've talked about collecting data. We've talked about the different kinds of data, qualitative data and quantitative data. It doesn't matter how beautiful your theory is. It doesn't matter how smart you are. If it doesn't agree with experiment, it's wrong. As usual, if you have any questions, send an email to Mr. Kazi at mrkazi.com. And don't forget to check out mrkazi'sworld.com for PowerPoints and much, much more. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Happy Ions, everybody. <laughs>